All right, here he is, Jorge Gamebred Masvidal, longtime representative of American Top Team. You know how happy it would make Dan Lambert if Masvidal could finally break through and win a UFC championship. He's as close to that level as he's been in his UFC career. As he's ever been. He's finally on the cusp of earning what so many people have hoped for for him. But that doesn't happen by accident. The reason he's this close now is because of the commitment that he has made to mixed martial arts. The commitment that he has made to evolving his game, going up to 170 pounds, and also using everything that he has in order to get to where he wants to be before. There might have been distractions. Now, Jorge Masvidal is solely focused on becoming a UFC champion. Left his family to go compete in a reality show outside of the United States. Gave him, a, yeah, <laughs> gave him a lot of focus and direction, and he has put all of that to good use here in the UFC. Well, even dating to his time on The Ultimate Fighter DC back in 2015, you got the sense very early on that Kamaru Usman could be something special, as he has always put it. I'm a problem. He's a champion. He's a real problem. Yes, he is a problem because he has a pace and pressure that most guys can't handle. We saw it in the RDA fight. We saw it in the Woodley fight. And because his wrestling is so smothering, as he showed in the Marais fight, his striking opportunities opened themselves up. Kamaru Usman, as you say, J.A., is a real problem for anybody at 107. And he's a loyalist. He has been true to his coaches, Henry Hoof, Greg Jones, and everybody else. Kamaru Usman has realized the dream, and he'll try to take it to the next level here tonight. Our tale of the tape for this highly anticipated welterweight fight. Two years apart, these two fighters, and they both possess a similar height and reach. All right, now for the particulars, here's Bruce Ladies Buck. and gentlemen, this fight is three rounds in the UFC welterweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a boxer, holding a professional record of 35 wins, 15 losses. He stands 5 feet 11 inches tall, weighing in at 170 pounds. Fighting out of Miami, Florida, Jorge Gamebred Masvidal. And now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. A wrestler holding a professional record of 20 wins, one loss. He stands six feet tall, weighing in at 170 pounds. Fighting out of Boca Raton, Florida, Kamaru, the Nigerian Nightmare, Usman. And when the action begins, our referee in charge, Dan Mergliata. Dan Mergliata. All right, so here we go, round one of this highly anticipated tilt between the strong striker and the decorated grappler. Any chance that these guys mix it up, or are you just expecting they're going to stick to what got them to the dance? I'm expecting a pretty straightforward approach from both of these fighters. Yeah. The striker will try to lead with his punches and his kicks, and the grappler will try to time a takedown, time a clinch position, so he can start to work towards a lot of those great judo throws that he possesses. Once on the ground, he is in his realm and will start to chase submissions. Oh, you got to watch him attacking submissions. He throws the legs up to try to get a triangle choke here. Watch triangle, watch triangle. He needs to push the arm to the side. Get his head against the mat. Now watch this. Oh, Usman gets back up, back into his comfort zone. And just misses with that big right hand. Trying to establish that jab once again. A lot of power on display from Kamar Usman as he lands yet again there. Kamar Usman showed in the Kobe Covington fight, not only is he the best walking in the world, he may just be the toughest welterweight in the world because he went through the fire in order to retain that title. Good jab. Big call for punch lands. Now he gets back to range. That is as big a strike as he has landed thus far tonight. Big, massive shot lands. Look at how tough the opponent is, though. Still standing, still in their fight. Back to the feet. So just over 20 total strikes have landed for Kamaru Usman. Over and over, he's landed these big body kicks. And both guys really throwing with authority. 
crotch. He's doing a really good job of getting him that high crotch. He's just following the action. All right, so you got to be careful playing on the ground with this guy. You don't want to mess around for too long. All right, close guard now. You got to be careful, though. He's got a lot of submissions off his back. Man, this is some serious ground and pound here, DC. He's not just staying busy for the sake of staying busy. These strikes are doing damage. Oh, yeah, no pity pass to this guy. Ah. This guy's trying to land, and he's trying to land effective strike. Masvidal's got the full mount. Oh, nice job using his strength there to posture up. We'll see what he can do now. He's going to start looking to land big shots from the top. Both fighters back to their feet now. Oh, man, that's a nice kick right there. He's doing a great job of landing that kick over and over. Clipped him with a right hand there. Ten seconds to go in round one. Oh, that's a nice strike. That's a really strong leg kick there by Kamaru. Round two now, Kamaru Usman okay, ready. Uh, versus ready. Jorge Masvidal. Go guys, fight! That was lightning fast, that right in. Oh, and he connects there. His hands look good tonight. So fast. I mean, this guy has tremendous hand speed. Oh, head kick blocked, though, by Jorge Gamebred Masvidal. Oh, that's a big right hand there from Game Bread. Boxing fundamentals, certainly not an issue for this guy. Very tight. He's as sound as they come, right? A lot of times you see a guy that comes from a street fighting background. You don't really stand after you take a head kick like this. That is such toughness to even be on his feet right now. Oh, big left. That one snuck in. Nice strike. And now Masvidal's lower jaw now starting to show oh. signs of swelling. He's in trouble. He's hurt bad. Oh, he might be out. He's throwing every part of himself into these big leg kicks. Oh, straight right. So we call on the flight stats here on officially. Look like he did start on the right set. He needs to start looking to finish now because he's got his opponent hurt very bad. Oh, he might be out. Oh! Oh, big left hook there. Well, he's really picked up the pace here in round two. Much more aggressive now here and starting to find himself in the pocket. This fight's gonna be over. What a great move. Very badly. Beautiful movement, hip work on the ground here, just outstanding with the transition. He is not staying in one place on the ground, and that's very important. All right, so he postures up here and now figures to rain down some ground strikes. Yeah, the ground and pound will be a plenty from this position. Well, he's up, but oh, is he hurt. Big kick. Oh. He didn't like that left hand. Oh, he's hurt bad. He's hurt bad, John. He's Just a gorgeous shot to end the fight right there. I'm not even sure the opponent really saw it coming. So back to the drawing board for him. But for the winner, this is certainly exactly what he was looking for here tonight. All right, DC, no Telestrator tonight, but we're going to get you some highlights from this one. This was a fight that had it all, and for my money, his best performance to date. His best performance to date in the biggest moment. In the biggest moments, you got to show up. And that's exactly what he did tonight. He used every bit of his skill to get the job done. There's 
buffer has the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Dan Bergliata has called a stop to this contest at four minutes, 14 seconds of round number two. Declaring the winner by knockout.